in 2009, we first observed the activities of the Sandlance from above the water. This was the first known recording of the spawning activity of these elusive fish. Our limited budget and equipment allowed us only brief glimpses of their life from below the waves. But the research still yielded previously unknown information about these fish and gave us the incentive to prepare for a better year in 2010. In the spring of 2010, our footage took on a whole new dimension. While shooting underwater footage off the west coast of Whidbey Island, I noted a shimmering in the distance which I thought at first may have been an optical illusion. Then as I swam toward the shimmering, I was met with a mass of fish. It took me several moments before I realized that I was in the midst of what were likely juvenile sand lance from the spawning we had observed the previous fall. The large school was hugging the edges of one of the kelp beds that dominate the area. This school was much larger than any we had observed the previous year. I became very optimistic about the prospects for new footage and new discoveries in the coming year. In November of 2010, we hit the water with upgraded equipment and some useful insight into the previously unknown habits of these secretive fish, which allowed us to capture even more vivid and revealing scenes from the spawning chaos. With an understanding of their pre-spawn behavior we had gained the previous year, we were able to place cameras in the right locations at the right times to record activity which had eluded us the year before. In 2009, we had observed a few sand lance burrow in and out of the sand. Underwater cameras this year revealed the scope of the burrowing activity and revealed behavior that seems to indicate that the burrowed fish respond to some stimulus and rush toward the spawning school. While our initial conjecture was that females burrowed to lay their eggs, this would not explain the sudden rush to join the spawning school just prior to the spawn. The sheer volume of milt released would certainly be sufficient to fertilize any egg within a vast area of beach. Here you can see the large schools, which dwarf the ones we had previously observed, engaging in what we came to recognize as the pre-spawn dance. What we had not observed before is the number of sand lance popping out of the sand and rushing toward the large school just prior to an event that caught us completely by surprise. What we had observed in 2009 only hinted at what is likely the most dramatic event of the spawning season.
Within seconds, the frenzy-filled spawning turns the relatively clear water to a nearly impenetrable fog created by the release of milt. This pace continues for 30 minutes or more, and less energetic activity will continue for more than an hour. While milt clouds from the previous year indicated large amounts of spawning off-camera, we did not comprehend the scale and intensity of the spawning that we could not see. A second camera angle captures large portions of the school that engage the spawning after the initial event has begun. During the spawning, even the fish seem to wander in the fog until commanded to spawn by some as yet unknown stimulus. Once the milt cloud begins to expand, the schools seem prone to repeat the spawning on the outer edge of the cloud and it becomes a race to stay ahead of the outer edges to capture more spawning activity. One of our underwater cameras also recorded sound and again gave us a new dimension to the study. We had conjectured about the trigger that initiated spawning. We were somewhat surprised to find that there is a distinct sound which occurs during spawning, which was not heard prior to the initial spawn event. The sound seems consistent with the disturbance of the sand and sounds like small shells jostled against each other from a distant location. We have not been able to tie this sound with a distinct act, but the observation continues as we review hours of footage and look forward to the spring of 2011.
despite a blinding cloud of milt and the propensity of the fish to spawn just off camera, the sounds leave no doubt as to the continuation of energetic activity just below the waves. The proper camera angle reveals the pock-marked substrate after the spawning school has moved on and prior to the wash away of the receding tide. Multiple cameras this year allowed us to record the creation of these pock marks by the emerging fish. The telltale bubbles released by the spawn ball are easily recreated by disturbing the substrate by hand. This unique look into the eye of the storm shows the extensive disturbance of the sandy bottom by the spawning fish. While this year's filming had its share of challenges, and many things did not work out as planned, there were some fortuitous malfunctions. One of the cameras got stuck in still frame mode, and while completely unattended, flashed picture after picture of the passing schools. With February of 2011 closing in quickly, we look forward to exploring the expanses of eelgrass and local kelp beds in an attempt to document the migration and growth of the newly hatched fry, and perhaps document some new part of their journey back to the spawning grounds. <laughs>